you're starting with, you know, you have cappings that still have honey or whatever else, what is the very first step that you start, I mean, to clean them up? Um, I, a lot of times I'll set them outside. And let the bees And let the bees clean them. Okay. Um, and then after that, you can do a solar melter then you can, or you can melt it here. Yeah. Okay. The solar melter is a good way. Um, if, um, if it's getting to this time of year and you might not have as many sunny days and things like that, um, I know something that Cindy Cottingham does that works real well. Is she'll, she'll, act, she'll literally wash them. You know, so she'll put them in a bin or something like that or in a, in a big bowl. Yeah. And um, the wax will all float. Yeah, and so I, you're just kind of. I've been told to put them in boiling water. Do that. Works well. I bet it, it does. Real well. Just slightly boiling, not a rapid, going to boil over thing. But I've uh, got beekeeper that I bought a lot of equipment off of. I could tell from the wax and the stuff that came with it. He put it in a steel bucket, it was yeah. an ammo, put it on, on a heat source, and uh, probably put six inches of water in a 12 inch deep bucket and threw wax on it. And I've done it. And I'll tell you what, the wax comes real clean because of the dirt, water soluble dirt that's in there comes out of the wax and yeah. the water turns real dark and if you let that cool it's, you will have a dark brown layer of wax on the bottom and they call it slum gum yeah. Yeah. and then yeah. on top you've got just beautiful clean right. wax and then you just break that and so if you've got pounds okay. of stuff to do you know Oh, wax and clean up, it's an effective method. It works yeah. well. I've done it with all of mine. Okay. And the way to get the slum gum off the body of the clean wax is an old cheese grater. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Right. Has anybody read it, a, uh, seen a book about bee, beekeeping by Richard Taylor called The How To Book of Beekeeping? But the way he does wax is he puts, he has a pan that he made. And he has a nozzle, you know, a large pan, but he has a nozzle up fairly high on it. You put water in that and you boil it. You put your wax in there, boil that. You put enough water in there to raise the wax level up to your spout. You open up your spout and then the wax comes out. And you just keep on adding hot water to get it all the way up to get the wax, to get the wax out while it's hot. Mm, but cool. it, it, it's a good book. It's not in print anymore, but but it's a very good book if you want to. Um, I mean, as far as it's called the how-to book of beekeeping. But the first couple times, yes, definitely take the temperature, keep an eye on it. Do not go and watch a soap opera because this thing called fire happens. Now, in case fire does happen, make sure you have baking soda or a fire extinguisher. Do not use water. It's not. The reason why the Catholic Church likes to use um, bee wax candles is because, number one, it's made by virgin bees. The second thing is, <laughs> seriously, she told me this, it, it burns cleaner, there's less soot in it, so there's, you know, not as much cleaning if you've ever been to a church, Catholic church, they're very elaborate where the candles are. So, um, is that right, Rick? How they do? I'm not sure about the whole virgin bee thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so nasty, but it is true. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> okay, now on, on we go. See, Jimmy made me lose my spot here. Okay, the first thing I'm going to talk about is if you want to make your own wicks. You can buy wicks from several places. These are from Nuisance, and the only reason they're from there is because they were having a sale, and I bought them. And these are really nice. They already have the little buttons on the bottom. People can actually put the buttons on the bottom. It takes a lot of time. I wouldn't do it. So you take your wick, and this mixture in here is a tablespoon of salt, two tablespoons of boric acid, a cup of water. So we're going to put this wick in here. What does that do? We're, we're making wicks. <laughs> it helps it helps it burn more even. What was the formula again? <laughs> One tablespoon of salt, two tablespoons of boric acid, and a cup of water. Okay. And then we're gonna let this sit in here for twelve hours. Just one? 
<laughs> it's going to sit for 12 hours, everyone. We're just going to watch it for a while. Actually, this one's already sat for 12 hours. I did it at home. Oh, I was going to say, is this going to be a long <laughs> Yes, a 12 hour thing. <laughs> so, Why do you soak the wicks in that mixture? What who, does that do to Who them? is that back there? Um, it's. <laughs> I'm only picking on it because he used to work where I work. Um, it is supposed to help them burn better. It's a it the piece of string yarn, whatever you call it, is 100% cotton, and it's good. That's what I should have told you too, and it actually helps it burn better. Because I've tried making them before and I didn't soak them in anything, and it never really worked well. And I'm wondering if that's why. Well, that's what that's what that's what they they say that this. That helps them do something else. It helps them, them suck the wax up better or something or keep burning that I, that I don't know. I just, when okay. I was doing my reading, it said that, so I did it and it, it worked. Because okay. mine would just, like, they, it could eat and it wouldn't burn. Mm -hmm. Did you it goes out. No, yes. I used mean, wick that I bought, oh, okay. but I didn't soak it in it. Oh, now this is wicks I've made. These wicks that I bought. Mm -hmm. They're all, they've already been primed and they're ready to go. Well, I bought them from the bee company. It was a whole roll, but like, it doesn't work well. Like Tyson has right here? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Tyson will tell you how to get it to work perfectly. Okay, wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> I bought two rolls of wicks from Man Lake. And uh, if you look through the Man Lake catalogs, they'll, they have the different uh, molds that you can buy, silicone molds or plastic molds. And um, they'll recommend what kind of wick should go in that. Um, I would say err to the side of the smaller wicks if you're going to do. Some of them they say, like even a man like, they'll say it can handle a bigger wick, but um, it burns the candle really fast. And if you go with the smaller wick, it lasts longer. So, so, and I don't, I don't understand the um, where they come up with the names for the wicks. Because there's, it doesn't seem like there's any real logic to it, but the bigger one, like something that you'd use for a, a bigger candle like this, is called um, 60 ply. 60 ply, and the smaller one that would be more like this, is called 2 slash O ply. Those are weaving terms. Is that what it is? Those are fiber terms. Okay, yeah. no wonder I don't understand that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not saying I understand it. I just know they're Okay. Okay. So those are the those are the two types of wicks that I use, and I've never had a problem with them not burning. I've never done anything special to them. So I wish I, there was an easy answer on that one, but I I've so, just used those, and they've always worked great. So that's not soaked like hers. I don't soak mine. No. Nope. They're they're uh, bought as wick, and uh, I don't know if they pre-soak them, but they've they've worked well for me. And how I melt my wax down, I've already got it melted, is I use my pan of water and then I use my spaghetti cans that's been emptied and washed out. And you can reuse them and reuse them. And I also make lip balms and other stuff that have scents to them. So you want to make sure that you keep them kind of separate and know which one's which. So you basically are going to dip your wick into the... Okay, then you want to make sure it's straight. And this is terrible. I forgot the thing to put the water in, so I had to steal a coffee cup. And then you just basically dip it into the coffee cup till it's cool, straighten it out, and lay it on a piece of paper to dry. I know that was terribly exciting. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is I've already got my wax and it's melted, and this wax is really dark. It came from Gary's solar melter so he told me it was the best he had when he sold it to me so I believed him so what I've got is another can and it's got a knee high on the top but you can also use like an old sweatshirt or a t-shirt if you use a sweatshirt make sure you have your fuzzies on the top so what would be the outside of the sweatshirt would be where the wax is going to drop through into so all right, I missed one part, so I have to tell you this before I do the things I tell you. If you're going to reuse glass jars, you need to warm them to a, at least 150 degrees. And if anybody's ever canned and not warmed your jars, and you pour the hot jelly in, and the bottom busts out of it. 
But you can also use, I'm sorry, I should tell you, you can also use pencils. You need something to hold the wick up so it will stay straight. So you tape it, you know, onto here. Popsicle sticks. You use so. the comb. I used the comb. Who said that? Yes, Paul, I used the okay. comb. Yeah. All right, now we're going to try to pour it through here. And you want to pour it slowly. And why do you have this kind of? Because it has little pieces of bugs, bees. Bee legs. Bee legs. Yeah. Or anything else that might have been in, in the wax. And I'll show you the top of it when there will be some stuff stuck in it. And also, when you guys look at your wax, you might have wax that's darker or lighter. I think it adds more character to the wax, so what do I know? But that's what I think. So. And I don't know if anybody can see in there, but there is like a, a little bee bud or something in the bottom of it. Okay, so this is all done now. And this is just really, really dark. And you can like take this and use like another part of it so you don't throw it away. You can free, not the same part, but a different part of it. So then we're just going to take this candle here. Whoops. Rewind. <laughs> I have to spray it down or else the thing, it won't pop out. So sorry about that. What do you spray it with? I am spraying it with Pam. Generic Pam, but they have Kelly's has actually has a um, silicone that you spray with. So if you're going to go to fairs or competitions, you want to use the silicone because it has no smell to it, and they will get you on that if you if you put that in. There. Okay, so and we're just going to pour this in here and hope it works. Yay. I heard that. So my setup is um, I use a uh, like an old um, I don't know pot rose pan, and I put some water. You know, fill it about halfway up with water, and then I use an old uh, saucepan that I don't plan on ever using for anything else again. And I've got a uh, and an old um, percolator that I bought at a yard sale. And um, if I start with cappings like this, you'll see, I mean, even in here, there's some bees and stuff that get into it, even when you wash it out, and, or if you leave it out for the bees to clean it, um, you're still going to have stuff in it. And so <clears throat> if I melted this whole bag, if I put it all in this saucepan, I melted it down, I might have enough to do one of these candles. Okay, so it takes a lot of cappings. And the other thing about cappings is that it takes a lot of time to melt that. I guess it's just the nature of the cappings. Has anyone else tried that before? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, it would be like an hour to melt that. And, you know, it's kind of like what Regina said, you don't want it to get too hot. Um, what well, temperature are you keeping your water at? My, the water, I, I always test the water, and this was at um, about 215 degrees is the water. So the, the wax is probably a little bit less than that, but. I thought the uh, melting of the wax was 145 degrees. That is about right. It'd be fine at about 150. I usually do it between um, 150 and 180. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, the flash points just under 400 degrees. So you definitely don't want it to get up to there. It'll start a fire. One other thing you can do, other than baking soda, is if you just have that lid for that saucepan handy, that's another good thing, just to keep it nearby, to keep it safe. And put the lid on there if you happen to have a problem. Thankfully, I've never had an issue with that. But like Regina said, you get to know the stove and how the stove works. You might use this the first time or two. You won't need it after that. I got a question, Tyson. Yeah. Uh, it's obvious you lose in volume from capping wax down to rendered wax. Okay, do you lose any in weight? Probably. Um, I, I've never really measured it. But, well, um, you know, that, that would give you an idea. Of, you know, like if you needed a pound of wax, naturally you're going to need at least a pound of cappings right. to do that. 
Yeah, I've never really paid attention to the to the weight of the cappings. Yeah. I've, it's always been volume. I mean, it's, I usually put as much as I can get in there. Yeah. Um, this year, I've started using a solar melter, and that is, oh gosh, that is a major time saver. Um, you know, something that would have taken um, an hour to melt down. This was from from cappings, way more cappings that I could put in there. You know, in an afternoon, that's all kind of ready to go um, to be melted down. It's a lot easier to melt it down once it's at this point. It goes a lot quicker. And um, along the line, I found a, um, it was just actually an ice cube tray. And since it was kind of in the honeycomb shape, I thought it might be cute to make a little candles out of that even. And um, the candles don't work out that great. They're too, they're too small. Uh, I still use them. I'll show you that a little bit. But, um, but it's a good way to pour the wax in because I know that each one of those is an ounce and a half. And uh, when you buy these type of molds, they'll tell you it takes three and a half ounces or this one's actually, it's hard to believe, but it's almost three times the amount of wax, nine ounces of wax in that. So, you know, if I'm just going to try to make, you really can only make, if you've got these different molds, you can make one candle a night. I mean, it, you'll pour the wax in there and it'll take it till morning to be hard enough to be able to pull it out. So you can't make a whole lot at a time. And kind of jumping ahead a little bit, Gary, I, I'll usually wipe out the inside of the pot and stuff when I'm done. And I'll use what I, the same fabric I use to filter the fabric. And it usually will get a bunch of resin and all kinds of stuff from you know, the, the inside of the, uh, the honeycomb and things like that. And I've started keeping these because um, these are awesome at starting a fire. And it's, it's just like a piece of canvas, basically. It's got beeswax on it, and that'll, that'll burn for like 45 minutes. Okay, so, um, so I've got some wax in here. I don't know how much people can see. There's not much in there. But it's actually already been cleaned a little bit. And I'll just usually, you know, dip in a little, this little cup here, pour it through the um, fabric in my percolator here. And um, as much as you try to avoid it, you drip wax on stuff. My wife loves that. <laughs> but it's beeswax. Yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and pour that into one of, one of these molds. Um, I'll try this one. These silicone molds are made, um, a lot of them are made with a split in them. So that it makes it easier to peel the, the candle out later. So that's convenient, but um, <clears throat> sometimes it makes it hard. You really got to kind of look at it and get that silicone lined up right so that you don't get that little cre crease or ridge in the candle. You take a little bit of time and get that straightened out, that it looks perfect. <clears throat> I use a piece of cardboard. I cut a little triangle of cardboard and I cut a little slit in it. Put my, my wick in there. <laughs> Question is if I can get it in there. Uh, Tyson, how much wick should you have sticking up from the, the candle? Well, see, um, on this one it's upside down. Okay. So I pull it about as tight as I, you know, as tight as I can and comfortable that I can, I'll feel like it'll stay there. I'll show you a little trick that I have on that. If we can get the, the wax to cool down fast enough. And I don't reuse the canvas. But I use it to start fire. So I do kind of reuse it, don't I? 
and then I'll just pour that in. I usually will pour it about a half inch short from the top of it. And just let it sit there. I'll get that wick all straightened up and things. And then when once that cools down a little bit, and the reason you can tell is when it's hot, it's um, pretty clear. And then what you know, it'll start to get kind of that darker color on top, a little bit more solid and rippled looking. And um, what I do is I'll take that piece of cardboard off and I'll snip that wick down below the, the bottom of the candle. You know, so the bottom's the top since it's upside down. I snip that wick off and then um, pour, pour a little bit of wax back on top so that there's no wick showing. What I found is that if I pour it all the way up to the top, it kind of puckers up at the, at the wick and it, it's wobbly when you set the candle down. A lot of people get through that, like what Regina was saying, they'll just take a pan and they'll, they'll melt, melt it back down, melt it back level again. I just have never done that. So then once it gets, once it gets hard and it's ready to come out, um, come on fingers, you get, just pull it out. I always leave a bunch of extra wick. So when I, when I thread it through there, I give myself like four or five feet of it so I don't have to thread it through every time. I just pull it, pull it out and snip it off. Give it about, I don't know, a half inch or so. Here's a, a bigger one. I did not use any kind of mold release. That's another nice thing that's about the silicone ones is that you don't have to use any kind of mold release. Um, got that one toward the end here. Now, this might be the difference. I just never thought of that. You know, if I try to burn, if I go ahead and light this, they'll just burn out. Mm -hmm. So what I do is I'll start a little candle like this, and I'll just real carefully stick the edge of that wick into there. That kind of primes the wick, and now it's ready to, ready to go. Did you just figure that out, or did you see it somewhere, or how did you, why um, do you do that? What made you think to do that? I, you know, I think I, I saw how people prime the wicks on the, the rolled candles. Mm -hmm. And um, so I guess I tried it one time and, and must have made a mistake. And Yeah. Um, I don't remember exactly, Tim, how I figured that out. You're sticking it in wax. Yeah, so I'm just sticking the end of it in wax, and now those are ready to go. Um, so... Uh, Something else. Oh, as far as burning the candles, um, they burn well, they burn clean. They don't smell a whole lot like beeswax while they're burning. And if you've noticed, the, if you're sitting up here close, the one I just blew out, now it smells like beeswax. So when you blow it out, then it kind of has that sweet smell throughout the house. But, um, but while it's burning, it doesn't. Sometimes people will say, well, I don't like them because they, they melt too quick or you know, they burn too quick. Well, they do. Um, when beeswax gets hot, you know, it, it'll run. So, the next thing I'm going to talk quickly about, and I promise it'll be quick, is actually making dip candles. You're like, yay! Okay. Um, what you do is you take your wick that's been prepared, and all this has is, is been dipped in wax, and then you dip it in and wait. Dip it in and wait. Dip it in and wait. I did this for half an hour several years ago and this seriously is how big my candle is. Wow. I never did it again. I just <laughs> I just I just <laughs> Yes, that's why I kept it because it was it took me forever. The other next thing I want to talk about and it's the rolled candles. And I had some trouble cutting the bottom of this. So what you can do is melt it in a pan, which I didn't bring. 
So basically on this one, and I'm going to roll a different one than that one because it's a pain. You just take your wick, which I just lost, your wick, you put it in, and then you roll it up. Just wax. It's wax. Foundation. No, this is actually not foundation. It's called. It's actually called wax, and it's from Dandin. So they actually sell this. You can make your own. Buy a, a like a cookie sheet. Make sure you spray it down and make it really thin. And you can make your own if you want. You won't have those cute little ridges in it, but you know, that's what you want. and then you roll it up. And that's basically what this one looks like. It's a sheet cut diagonally. So what I'm going to show you real quick, I'm going to get that out of the way. Sorry. I think someone's moved all my stuff. No, it wasn't moving. Yes, it was nice. Okay, this is just a half a sheet cut in half. My husband cut it. That's why it's so. Yeah, he's not here. That's right. Okay, and all you do basically is start, and you want to bend it over, and you want to make sure your wax is warm, but it's kind of hot in here. So I did bring a a plant heater that I use to heat my plants with, and that's what I use at home when it's cold. And then you just roll it up. The tighter you can roll it, the better it is. And you keep rolling it up. I think that's so exciting. So I did that, I did that, I got to think of anything else I want to tell you. They have, and I believe this one is from um, New Sense. It actually tells you if you're go what you're going to use. If you're going to use natural wax, they tell you these are the wicks you want to buy and you want to use. Um, if you buy the wrong wicks and the wrong sizes, your candle will burn lopsided or burn really fast and, and you really don't want that. And also in this, this is Dan's book, they give you real simple directions on you know, how to do the candles. And if you do your own candles, it's so much nicer because if you really like these and you have two of them on your mantle, you can clean it out, redo it, and have two on your mantle. If your daughter or son or somebody's getting married and they think seashells are just like the most awesome thing, you can take the little tiny wicks, put them in the seashells, put the wax in, and then float them around in a bowl of water. And, and they're very, very nice. So I really, oh, one more thing. Instead of cans, if you want, you can use like these Mountain Dew bottles. My husband drinks lots of Mountain Dew, so we have lots of these. We eat lots of spaghetti, too, and beans. <laughs> you do not want to use these. It's messy. Don't use those. So you want to use these. You want to make sure it's something that's going to take the heat. And these, you can use them. And when you're done, you throw them away. So when I burn them, yeah, yeah. I'll put them in some kind of candle dish or whatever it might be. My wife had several things like mm -hmm. that. Okay, so that because yeah. they end up giving a, a, what do you call it, a dip in it when they burn. Yeah. And then as soon as it gets, that's when you go and burn, blow it out, blow out the candle. Yeah, once the, once the, once it gets real, you know, <laughs> melted out to the edge. Yeah. Um, okay, because it would happen last year. Yeah, it would happen. It happens fast in the beginning, mm -hmm. and then after the first time or two, you burn it. Then, um, um, yeah, then they'll burn for longer. You can let them go for out, you know, a couple hours at a time. Um, this one I just noticed. I think I had made this one either last fall or this spring, but you can see, you know, over time, the um, and this might might have started as a little bit different color to begin with, but. The, the wax begins to get a little bit of a, um, like a powdery, a white powdery coating on it. They call it the bloom. And um, it's, a, it's actually a, a good sign that, you know, it's pure beeswax when it gets that. 
if it, if it bothers you, you can just like wipe off the candle and it's gone. And when your candles burn down like that, you can roll them, which you just take like the edge that comes up and you just kind of roll it down in and it will burn down into itself too. Oh, yeah. That makes them last a little bit longer. Oh, yeah, and there's, you can see some of the different colors you can, you can get. Do you have any, other? Put any dyes in to change the colors? I, I have not yet. I did just buy some, though. I've got some... Um, I was actually thinking about making, trying to make Advent candles, so I got, I got some purple and some pink. Okay. Yeah, and see if see what that'll look like with yellow wax. I don't know. Have you ever tried putting any scents or anything in it? I have not. No. I know you can. Something else you can do. I seriously would never ever do that. If you're going to do that, you, you might as well buy. Yeah. Well. Apple cinnamon. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so you can buy the. Um, it's not beeswax, it's other wax, and it's really cheap, you know, with what the beeswax is, yeah. Mm -hmm. And you can put all your scents in that, and you don't have to worry about maybe the honey making it off a little bit. Yeah, I've done that before where I've just taken the other wax. And, and then. Have you ever tried cleaning your uh, equipment up or anything with wax, or is it pretty much? Cleaning, cleaning my bee equipment up? Or yeah, cleaning this equipment up? Pots and pans and stuff like that. Yeah. I just wipe it out. I, I don't ever get them clean again ever. I don't plan on ever cooking in them again. So that's uh, I kind of just res resign myself to that. I maybe you had a nice easy method to. No, I don't. Did you wipe it out as it's still warm though, right? Yeah. yeah. Water. Yeah, wipe it out. Wipe them while they're warm. Yep. I'll usually take this stuff or or paper towels if it's really nasty, you know, and just get it wiped out, wiped clean, and. Believe it or not, you've got to wipe them out on the inside and outside because wax will kind of drip into the water and stuff and it gets that all kind of caked up and gooey too. You've got to clean that out once in a while too. You have a question? Here? In regards to the question earlier about cleaning it up, um, I asked the, uh, the chemist at work, uh, I said, hey, what, the, what melts wax? So she looked it up on the web, which I did later too. But and I decided to use naphtha, which you can buy down in the paint section, mm -hmm. and uh, it works wonderful. You know the, the old wax that gets inside the extractor and uh, maybe in any other things that you got, and it's like soak a rag in that well, naphtha. It doesn't evaporate real fast. There's some other things you can use. They evaporate so fast, they don't really, and it does a wonderful <coughs> job. If you want to clean wax off something, a piece of metal, that pot, you get it you know, drained out as well as you can, scrape it, and then if you wipe it with naphtha, uh, it'll clean that sucker up, and then you just wash it again with soap, and it's ready to go. Hmm. So it, it uh, does a wonderful job of dissolving that. Yeah. I wanted to ask him, does, would yeah. naphtha work on propolis? I don't know. Give it a try. Is, is I haven't had the need to, but yeah. uh, you're right. My uh, hive tools get coated with it. I'll, I'll try it sometime right. next time. I'm, I'm doing that cleaning. Is there anything else that people use to clean the propolis off tools and stuff? I don't know. Uh, huh? Oh, just propolis is really alcohol. Rubbing alcohol will oh, get propolis off anything. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. Thank you. Oh, and um, yeah, I do use a. a um, Wax paper or, or parchment paper. I usually try to spread that over the area where I'm working, just to kind of keep the keep the wax off stuff. I'm just pouring off this other wax. I, I'm pretty much done. If you guys have more questions, I'll be happy to answer them. But otherwise, is that cool? Is it cool? Yeah, the percolator makes it easy. Now, is that cool? Let's shrink up a little bit.